has been a little bit of time since I've really come back to some of the biggest mods for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. More specifically, the one I'm going to be talking to you about today. This is Eagle Rising. I covered it in its very early forms and it was bringing the Roman world and the ancient factions to Mountain Blade. In the early days, it was one of the most popular modifications and it had so much potential. This was going to be something massive and now I've come back to it. Update after update have been out with more factions, more units and way more incredible mechanics that I cannot wait to show you guys. This is Eagle Rising, Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord's best mod so far. Have you ever felt the need to shame your Scared to go down there in case it ends or tall? one of the leading brands in men's grooming and hygiene products. The Lawnmower 4.0 trims your jaws with pinpoint precision and advanced skin safe technology, keeping your prized possessions cut free. Waterproof with a cordless charging system, it's perfect for any place, any time to get that buttery smooth feeling. Cap off with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray to not only make you feel, but also smell so good. But what is that? The Weed Whacker for nose and ear hair? Along with some sexy feeling briefs and Manscaped travel bag, two free gifts for a limited time only. Get 20% off with free shipping and these two free gifts using the promo code RESONANT at manscaped.com or check out the link in the description for more. Yeah, Manscaped can see your balls This mod has a really big development team with almost 20 active developers on it at this point in time with many more in the background as well of course as a quick overview it takes you back to the ancient world the factions so far are the romans the celts the dacians and the scythians these are still works in progress more specifically the scythians being the newest faction however they're not the only ones that will be coming in planned later on are carthage sparta athens macedon germanic tribes and possibly parthia and these are the ones that i cannot wait for i really Really want to be able to play as Carthage because we got some mods for Mountain Blade Warband that were based in Rome, Bellum Imperii, Mountain Gladius, March of Rome, those sorts of things. But they always focused on the Roman factions, particularly. Of course, it makes sense. They are so popular, and even now in Eagle Rising, that's the main factions that people want to play as. But I'm so glad we're looking into other cultures and other tribes that will be playable within the mod. When I first checked it out, there was very basic bones of this. You had the basic Roman armor and weapons and you had some tribes and things like that with the Batanians but it was basically just a troop reskin there wasn't really anything in terms of new mechanics or anything like that now it is a completely different story not only had Rome been completely overhauled the armor looks so much better the naming of the troops are fully in before when I first played this mod when you'd recruit Roman soldiers they'd just be called Empire Infantry or so on now they have their proper ranks with Tiro Evocati cohorts they look absolutely gorgeous as well this Lorica Segmentata armor it is infamously a beautiful piece of history and it is just designed so well 3d artists in this mod have done a fantastic job here not only that but there are some more mechanics that they've introduced to some of the factions for example with Rome now you know in normal mountain blade when you put your guys into a shield wall the rank behind would put the shields above their heads it would work for two ranks but that would be about it well in Eagle Rising it works for all ranks you can have proper test studios within the game and it looks amazing especially with all the Roman and armor and the shields me personally when i got my locus segmentata armor my cool mask okay not all that roman but it still looks cool the gladius and the hasta spear i felt like a true roman legionary leading my men into the charge but not only do we have testudo now but we also have some mechanics with that aforementioned gladius swords everybody knows it was one of the most famous weapons of the ancient world a staple of the roman legionary but it was a thrusting sword being able to use it in the ranks of a shield wall getting
getting those strikes through the corners of the Scutum shields and focusing on a thrust rather than a slash. Of course, if you're in ranks in a shield wall, slashing is going to be much more difficult, and they've tried to represent that as much as they can within the game. In other words, you can't slash with a Gladius. You can do overhead and normal stabs, but it limits the player to just those two attacks. I think some people might find that's not the best way to go. Of course, the four directions is the staple of Mountain Blade's combat, and taking two of them away is something that does limit the player somewhat. But I guess that's just the limit that you're going to have to consider if you want to choose to join the front line with a Gladius and Scutum. In history, of course, Gladiuses were also used for slashing, but that's what they're most famous for, so I guess that's just how it's been represented here. But let's go away from Rome. Rome is fantastic. We know it looks great. You've got auxiliary, you've got archers, you've also got your legionaries. But one of my favourite additions is with the more Celtic tribes. Now, you can also get these units with Rome, but they're way more present in the Britannians or the Celts or the Dryatics or the Dacians in this case. And these are slingers. The slingers look fantastic. The way that they've been able to take the cloth physics from Mountain Blade and apply that to slings, make them actually look and feel like you're firing a sling. Something that we haven't really seen in many Mountain Blade mods in the past and it's a really inventive way of doing it. The Celt shields look great. They feel like proper barbarians. And whilst I didn't really get much time with the Dacians and the Celts, there is still a lot to see as these are very much in progress factions. Speaking a bit about Dacia, they're currently replacing Volandia, but that position will move a little bit later on to fit the law of what they're trying to go on for here. The Falksmen look fantastic, the shields and the armor look amazing. But I really want to focus on Scythia, the newest implementation. Currently, they replace the Kuzates in the east of the map, and of course, they're more cavalry based lads, so it makes a bit more sense. They're trying to get a bit of a mix between Scythians and Samaritan factions. You'll be playing with a lot of horse archers and lighter armored troops. I fought against them quite a lot in the bit of campaign that I was playing and they were terrible foes. They were such a pain, especially the bigger armies. I had to just put my guys in a testuda formation as horse archers would just run rings around my legionaries, picking them off one by one and eventually we recreated Battle of Tutambo Forest and we were completely slaughtered. It was a little bit embarrassing. A lot has been introduced to the campaign, a lot of renaming troops and a lot of reskins of places and how they actually are implemented into the world itself and it's done to a really high level. I think at this point, if you wanted to start a single player campaign with this mod, you'd be getting a really immersive and quality experience here. Yeah, there'll be some bits that still feel a little bit work in progress, but this is as good as it's ever been. And I had so much fun finding out all the different troops and the new mechanics that have been added in. But let's talk a little bit about the future. Of course, as I mentioned, there's some more factions that have been planned, mostly around Laconia. These will, of course, be Sparta, the Lacedaemons, and of course, Athens and Macedon will be coming in as well. There will be some real history and lore that goes into this. Athens and Sparta will have a lot of hostility towards each other, warring each other constantly throughout the campaigns, and of course, Macedon growing and growing to eventually join in. With the Eagle Rising mod, it's not necessarily based exactly on history, but they're almost trying to inject history into the lore of Bannerlord. For example, the Macedonians are going to eventually be integrated into the Empire, and they've said this will then become the dominant culture by the time of Bannerlord. That's the mod developer explanation for the shift from Latin to Greek slash Byzantine style. And I think it's really cool how they're taking bits of history, but also mixing it with the fictional lore that we have in Mountain Blade. But you will also, as a player, have the chance to prevent this from ever happening. Taking out the Macedonians and then seeing the results of a Roman Empire that never became the Byzantines. There is so much more that this mod has to offer. But so far, I think Eagle Rising has to probably be one of the most developed mods for Bannerlord. It is so far along, and because it was one of the earliest, and it, of course, is dealing with other mods. The Calradia Awakens mod and this mod are, of course, in conjunction with each other. And I know a lot of other mods that are teaming up as well in order to use and share assets and files. And I think this community that is growing around Bannerlord's modding scene is looking fantastic. I can't wait to see what Calradia Awakens does in the future. But I guess until then, we'll just have to wait and find out. But leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one. Hey,